Hi, my name is Ava and I'm here with Lawson, Brooke and Will and we're group 23 and today we're going to talk about virtual teams in the technology sector. So to start out, I'm going to talk about what a team is and then more specifically what a virtual team is. A team is defined as an interdependent group of employees who function as a unit working toward a common goal, often with little or no supervision, and these teams carry out work-related tasks, functions, and activities. More specifically, a virtual team is a team composed of people who work from remote sites online. There are several benefits of virtual teams. To start, um, you can really broaden your recruitment with virtual teams because you're not limited by region or geographical constraints. So you can hire the best talent from all over the world into your company. Also, it's more environmentally sustainable. Working from home, you don't have to commute to work every day, so that saves a lot of traffic and pollution. Also, working online, you don't use as much paper and physical supplies in the office, which is great for the environment. And then, last but not least, the retention of valuable employees. So, the flexibility to work from home is a really great incentive for a lot of people, especially if they lead busy lives outside of work or have families. So this is always a really great option for retaining those really great employees and incentivizing them to work for the company. As great as virtual teams are, there are, all, there are also some potential drawbacks. So first of all, it can be difficult to instill workplace culture in a virtual environment with virtual teams just because when you're not interacting face-to-face -face on a day-to-day -day basis, and really forming that rapport with your coworkers, that culture can definitely be difficult to establish. And then also miscommunication is common in virtual teams just because with technology, there is a lot of room for error in communication, whether it's technological difficulties through a virtual meeting or misconstruing a message over email, there's definitely a lot of room for error in virtual communication. And then these two components of lack of culture and miscommunication can further lead to incompetent team members in a virtual setting. And then on top of that, um, it's kind of difficult sometimes to properly train employees in a virtual way. And it's hard to establish a really solid accountability system. So if those measures aren't in place, then that can also lead to incompetent team members. So now we're gonna get into some more specific case studies about um, virtual teams and Lawson's gonna get us started with Facebook. Yeah, so like Ava said, my name is Lawson and now that we've taken a more broad conceptual look at virtual teams, we're gonna look at some specifics starting with one of the biggest players in virtual teams today, Facebook. So um, I know I like my inbox was just flooded with all kinds of news um, earlier in the pandemic about Facebook because a lot of work, um, almost all work in the business world was moved remotely um, for this time period, but Facebook actually took the next step um, into moving their workers into virtual teams long term. So that's what this article is kind of about right here. Um, so one of the main reasons they did that was their overhead costs. So Facebook has one of the largest headquarters of any tech company in the world, and they spent $270 million roughly in 2016 um, to build it. Between various expansions, they built um, a rooftop forest, not a rooftop garden. Um, their total expenditures on this project were close to um, $750 million, so three quarters of a billion dollars. Um, so obviously one plus side would be to cut back on these overhead costs of having that um, workplace culture in the office. Labor costs also went down, or, or also are intended to go down for Facebook. So another big drawback of that big office space they have in the Bay Area is that it is one of the most expensive places to live in the world. And so they have to play, pay their employees um, under that premise. And one of the plans for Facebook in the future is actually to adjust the wages of their employees based on where they're choosing to work from remotely. So that's gonna save them money in the long term. That could be seen as a drawback or a negative side effect for employees, uh, but most of them are totally on board um, as of now, at least before their paychecks are getting cut. That's just one extra thing to worry about um, when it comes to virtual teams. Also productivity. So Mark Zuckerberg um, was once one of the big proponents of, of decreased productivity when you're working from home. So this has been um, a theoretical concept that's been thrown around in the tech world for a long time. Um, and obviously Facebook was very opposed to it, <laughs> seeing that they spent $750 million on the office space. Um, but over the last few months, it's really been 
a great case study and how productivity doesn't necessarily um, go down when you're working from home. So people are, are equally as motivated. They're getting just as much work done and maybe even in a smaller time frame um, because they can do the other things that they want to do once they finish when they're at home. So this is just a study, um, the graph on the left of, of productivity from home versus in the office. And so this isn't necessarily seen as a major drawback anymore by Facebook. So transitioning into these virtual teams, how are they gonna, gonna make this happen? Um, so all new hires who are like senior engineers and up get the opportunity to work remotely starting day one. So they never have to go into the office um, and kind of get integrated into the office culture. Um, and the way it works for current employees is they'll be moved into virtual teams incrementally um, based on their performance evaluations in the office place. So it's not like, everyone's going virtual all at once, let's just shut down the office. Uh, it's definitely gonna be something that's more incremental. Uh, there is a transition period for that as well. Some of the limitations for Facebook um, of this virtual Teams application is that um, Mark Zuckerberg specifically talked about how when he was starting up Facebook, he really relied on the concentration of talent in the Bay Area when it comes to technology and programming and stuff like that. So newer companies that aren't as established as Facebook might not be able to just go online for everything and do virtual teams because they really do rely on um, heavy concentrations in really academic areas. And another thing is that hardware engineers, um, one of the specific companies that uses a lot of hardware engineers is Apple. They're not going to be able to move um, a lot of that direct hands-on work into virtual teams just because it is really necessary for um, hardware engineers to be in person. Yeah, so I'm going to pass it back over to Ava, and she's going to tell us a little bit about what Twitter is doing with virtual teams. Hi, so again, I'm Ava, um, and I'm going to talk about Twitter now. We're going to keep it going with the social media and technology trend. So first, I'm going to give you a quick overview of their transition to virtual teams, and then I'm going to discuss whether or not this is really setting a new precedent for our workforce. So this is the headline. Um, from BBC News, coronavirus Twitter allows staff to work from home forever. So that the COVID-19 pandemic was really the catalyst for Twitter's decision um, to allow remote work permanently. So I will tell you guys about that. So for those that don't know, Twitter is a San Francisco based social media platform and application and they have over 4000 employees globally. So for them, virtual teams can be extremely valuable. Um, in order to kind of integrate these employees from all over the world. There's over 300 million active monthly users. So this is a huge platform, um, which explains why they have such a wide reach globally. So basically in March 2020, as I said, COVID-19 was really the catalyst for this transition. Um, Twitter announced in March that they were gonna be moving entirely to remote work due to the pandemic. And then this really began the widespread use of virtual teams in the company. And they ultimately saw that it was successful. It was working, whether or not they expected it to, it was working. And so then in May, 2020, they announced that they would offer a permanent work from home option even after the pandemic is over. So basically this Twitter announcement, it really, it sets a precedent for permanent remote working beyond COVID-19, which obviously necessitates the rise of virtual teams in the workplace. This is, like I said, this is such a large platform. This is such a large company globally that for such a well-known and large company to make this decision to allow permanent work from home, even after COVID-19 is over, that's as a professor from Stony Brook University described, it's era defining news. This is really, really important. And this rise of virtual teams and remote work is really made possible by technologies such as Zoom, which we're using right now. We could be defined as a virtual team. And Slack, Google Hangouts, the cloud technology like Google Drive, it really makes this possible because it allows for seamless collaboration online. And then also a really interesting um, company that is really conducive to virtual teams is WeWork and so they allow you to rent office space for a day on demand or as needed which reduces the need for a permanent physical workspace so then you can work virtually most of the time and then if you do ever happen to need to meet up in person you have that option without having a permanent workplace. 
And now I'm gonna pass it over to Brooke and she's gonna tell us about Google. Thank you. Like Ava said, my name is Brooke and I started my research with a Google case study. Um, Google released the results of a multi-year case study on what makes for a great virtual team. Because COVID-19 has created such a desire for businesses to become successful remotely, managers now need to take different approaches when leading their teams since it's no longer in person. Um, my first question was, how can managers lead their teams to create success in, vir in virtual environments? So I started off by reading the tips that they had on their website saying that getting to know each other as people with starting meetings with conversations helps in building connections and establishing support with your coworkers, setting boundaries, asking the coworkers in different time zones when they prefer to take meetings, um, and forging that in-person and virtual connection. So setting clear guidelines on when in-person meetings are recommended, using video calls at other times, et cetera. But then I started to think, is it really that simple? Is it really just a three tip advice for managers to lead their teams in this new virtual environment? Um, I just wanted to make sure that going from success and productivity in the office and bringing that same effort and efficiency to the home office was a lot more than just three steps. So companies are actually starting to think remote work isn't so great after all. With COVID-19 rushing people to become remote workers, it has led to some different outcomes than originally expected. For example, projects are taking longer, collaboration is harder, and training new workers is definitely a larger struggle than when in the office. And when I started to think about this, I began to think about, like Ava said, our management team as a virtual team. And I feel like we were definitely productive and efficient as as we could be, but if we were in the classroom setting or in an office, we definitely could have been more efficient and effective. Um, the future of virtual teams are kind of being debated right now. Workers are beginning to appear less connected than they were than when they were in the office. Bosses are fearing that younger professionals aren't developing at the same time as they would in offices surrounding by professional colleagues. and. Um, some quotes that I found from the article were people saying this is not going to be sustainable and that problems took an hour to solve originally, took the whole day in the office to solve. So going forward, businesses will become more efficient and effective at home with their virtual teams over time, but the question still remains, is this going to be sustainable and are people going to be just as productive in the long run? And if not, what can managers do to lead their virtual teams to the desired level of productivity from home? And now I'm going to pass it off to Will for his case study on Microsoft. Uh, thank you. Like Brooke said, my name is Will, um, and I did the case study on Microsoft, which is another notable company that has been implementing new plans so that their employees can work from home successfully during this time. Over the past few months, Microsoft has performed over 30 research projects in order to gain a better understanding of how the recent switch to remote work affects their employees. They also took this opportunity to further innovate their Microsoft Teams platform, which they created to help facilitate and encourage collaboration and communication between colleagues when they are not able to work together in person. Using surveys of over 2,000 remote workers in six different countries, along with the many research projects um, throughout the company, Microsoft was able to uncover the good as well as the challenging aspects of remote work. Uh, this data will help us better understand what the future of the workplace will look like and whether or not remote work is here to stay. One of the biggest findings from these studies is that remote work and virtual meetings can actually feel more challenging and mentally exhausting than traditional in-person collaboration. After conducting a study where several teams of two people were paired up to complete tasks, one remotely and one task in person, they found that remote work was more challenging for the participants. The research suggests that remote uh, meeting fatigue can result from several factors such as having to focus continuously on the screen and attempt to pull out relevant information and stay involved. Also, there are reduced nonverbal cues in virtual meetings, making it more difficult to read the room and uh, knowing whose turn it is to talk, for example. In addition to this, they found that if the pair initially was working together remotely, it was more difficult for them to effectively collaborate in person. Uh, and rather it was easier for those who started off working in person and moved to remote work afterwards. This suggests that when the pandemic eases, 
uh, and companies start to transition back to in-person work, it may feel more difficult to transition from online to in-person than it was from in-person to online. Microsoft has used this research to help them update their Microsoft Teams platform. Uh, for example, they recently introduced a together mode, which is designed to give the feeling as if you're sitting in the same room as others. Um, and this helps to eliminate background distractions, makes it easier to pick up on nonverbal cues and makes back and forth conversation feel more natural. Uh, over the past few months, many workers around the world have moved to working remotely at least part-time and the continuous increase in remote work raises questions about the place that traditional in-person work and office will have in the workplace in the future. Microsoft's research suggests that physical offices will not completely disappear and there will rather be a mix of in-person and remote collaboration. As a result of increased remote work, the traditional nine to five workday will likely not be as prevalent as in the past, as remote work allows for more flexible hours due to the lack of a need to commute. By grabbing data from their Teams platform, Microsoft found that people were working frequently, uh, more frequently during hours outside of the typical workday. They found that activity during 8 to 9 a.m. and 6 to 8 p.m. had increased about 20% and, um, and weekend activity had increased by over 200%. The diagram shows that a large majority of managers and employees desire the flexibility of remote work and expect the implementation of new work from home policies, even as the pandemic eases. Now I'm gonna hand it back to Lawson to wrap it up. Yeah, so in conclusion, just a few things that we've covered today, and we've kind of defined virtual teams for you. Um, we've talked about some benefits and drawbacks of virtual teams and remote working in the workplace today. We showed you some case studies, whether it be Facebook and Twitter or the research studies being done by Google and Microsoft. There's some really important information being talked about there. Um, we've talked about some best practices, what you need to do if you're part of a virtual team. Um, and we really emphasize on the future of virtual teams because this is something that's here to stay. I mean, um, the, the business world has been altered entirely by this pandemic. And this may be one of the most important factors um, that change moving forward. So we just wanted to highlight some things that are going on now um, and project what's happening um, in, in the present day into the future. So we hope you appreciated our project and here are our sources. Have a good one.